this is not merely a speech, as Eric has mentioned before. This is more like a guided discussion. So that means I will be constantly asking you guys questions. And don't be afraid to answer those questions because there is no correct answer to those questions. So anything that, you know, as long as you can answer them, you're correct. So, and, oh, and also, if you have any questions at any point in my speech, feel free to just raise your hand and I'm more than, I, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. In this way, both you and I will get the most out of this event. So let's get started. Let's start with me asking you guys a question. Why do we have to be students? Like, have you ever considered this question before? Like, why do we have to be students sitting, you know, on a seat and listening to someone on stage talking? Why can't we just be like authors or farmers or I don't know, whatever? Like, why do we have to be students? So I want to know about your thoughts on this. Like, any, like, you know, why, why do you think, why do we have to come to school? Anyone? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I think 
thank you, I take note of it. So basically, identity is anything that makes you unique from other people. So from your passion, from your hobbies, or even your um, academic interests, what is yours contributes to your identity. So uh, in a lot of sense, identity is what defines you, as what, what you just have said, and what others define you. So, what Erickson believes that will be a challenge to teenagers is that if we don't find our identity when we're still teenagers, when we grow up into adults, we'll be confused and we'll be trapped in this maze of life because there's just simply too many options and too many possibilities out in this world, in this society. We, these people without their identity will be confused and they don't even know why they exist in the first place. So what, how do we tackle how do we tackle this whole identity issue? Well, I think you can break it down, break the identity thing into several aspects because you are made up of many different things. So the first thing is to find your academic interest. Now, this sounds you know, quite self-explanatory, but um, your academic interest is extremely important because, well, first, your college career will be, well, your college goal will probably be very relevant to the things that you want to study in, in high school. And plus, your future career goal will be heavily will also be heavily influenced by the things that you're interested in right now. Like for example, if you like you know programming as a high school student, when you grow up, even though you might not become like a professional programmer or an engineer, you will probably end up working for a like high tech company or something. And it's so related. So finding academic interest is extremely important. And of course, for some students, they're really lucky. They already found what they want to study at a very young age, you know? Like some people might already know that they want to be astronomers, or want to be mathematicians, or even be teachers. And that's lucky for us, we should be happy with that. But for many other students, including myself, we don't really know what we want to study. Because there's just well, two situations. Either the subjects are all too interesting, so you can't decide on which one you like or the subjects are all equally boring, so you don't know which one is the one that you like. Like for some people, they might think math is too difficult. Math is too difficult. And or, you know, like history, there's too many things to remember. And English, well, they can't even read their own, read their own handwriting. How can they like English? So that's a problem that a lot of people face. And the worst part is a lot of people don't even enjoy studying. Like, you know, they, when they, look at the book and they start reading, they fell asleep because they just find it extremely boring to study. But that's also okay because your identity is consists of many other aspects. And one of them is non-academic interest. So what are non-academic interests? Well, basically, it's your uh, passion, your skills, your dream, and your, you know, the, anything that you're uh, passionate about. Um, a lot of celebrities, like Steven Spielberg, um, Taylor Swift, and also Elon Musk, they all find that one thing that they love and they have passion in when they were still students. And as you can see, they pursue this hobby and pursue this passion and become very uh, successful in their respective fields. So the key thing is this. You uh, have to find something that you like and make a commitment to it. And even like, if you find another thing that you also like, then don't be afraid to do it. Because no one says that once you start doing something, for example, uh, today you start playing basketball, and you find ball, you're also interested. Like, like no one says, no one is there to stop you from also trying to do volleyball. I'm a perfect example of this. So in, when I was in like seventh grade, when I was in middle school, I was extremely interested in programming. And to be honest, I have to tell you, I was good. Um, like, for real, for real, like, I thought, you know, I have some talent to, and some gifted, you know, qualities that make me um, solve questions faster than all the other, all of my peers. Like, during 7th and 8th grade, I'm always the top person in school, like, beating everyone else in, like, C++ uh, C++ programming and stuff. And so back then, I thought, you know, I was destined to be, like, a, become a programmer. And, you know, I even, wished myself to become one of the most important engineers of the 21st century. 
And that was a huge dream. And you know, programming was like my part of my identity. However, my dream was shattered. Uh, in ninth grade, the difficulties of the algorithms that we learned in school increased dramatically, like a lot. We can even say it's exponential. So uh, despite my practice and practice and practice, I just could not keep up with the class. Like I just could not understand why the answer is like this. Why do we have to employ this kind of algorithm? Well, my peers and my like classmates, they were like, oh, easy peasy. And then submit the answer and they got it right. So I was quite, I simply, I realized that I lacked the logic and I lacked the reasoning skills and also, very importantly, the mathematical concepts behind these advanced algorithms. So I was disappointed and disillusioned because, you know, I thought programming was my dream. So then I decided to give other things a try. So I, the thing that I chose was karate. Yes, and it turned out that the uh, decision was correct. So after four years of consecutive and hard training, I am now a black belt senpai, and I have won several gold medals in national competitions. Now I am proud of my achievement, and I am grateful that I made that decision because I did not link, uh, I did not uh, cling on to the to that you know programming stuff that is actually not uh, fit to me, and pursue a new path. And now karate has become part of my identity. The key thing is this, make a commitment to the things that you love, and if you find uh, things that you also want to try, just try it, don't hesitate. That's a thing that I also find among college students, it's that we are often too hesitant in giving new things a try, and we miss the chance of doing so. And years after when you look back, we regret our inaction. We'll, we, will, we will be like, oh, why didn't I do that earlier? I should have done that, I should have done that. I should have done that, but it's too late. It's already passed. So craft a chance to build your own identity because in this way, if you do any if you do everything by yourself and knowing like what you like and what you don't like, then your identity will be yours alone because you make those decisions by yourself. That's the end of my first section of identity. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask now. And like you, if you think that some, yeah, if you think oh, there's some part that we don't really understand, or if you have any challenges to my ideas, like oh, I disagree with this, and this, and that, and that, I disagree with you, like your whole person, it's also <laughs> okay. Just raise your hand. I want to hear different ideas. If you disagree, yeah. So anything or, or any thoughts that you want to share, because it's a free, free platform. And you can also give like your reaction to something about very few stuff. You want? Okay, good. Then we can move on. So, despite, well, having a personal identity is not enough. We also need to build our values. So values is like the compass of our behavior, guiding us to know what is right and what is wrong. Without values, we cannot think or reason properly. Like black becomes white, left becomes right. With to people without values, everything is the same. And they can't really make solid judgments because, well, everything is the same. So they don't see the difference between A and B, B and C and D, and stuff like that. And fortunately, you guys are already, you know, kind of building your values. When you are still children, your parents shape your values by teaching you what is right and what is wrong. For example, they might say, Oh, Oscar, you said please and thank you. Good job! To teach you the importance of social etiquette. Or they might say, You should not kick your shoe into someone else's breakfast. That is rude. Bad, bad, Oscar. Yes, that actually happened. Um, to teach you, like, you know, maybe you should not play with your shoe in public restaurants. Um, that's why in Chinese, the term jia jia, or, you know, mannerism in family, is so important because your actions reflect your parents' behavior. So if you are very rude and you know and always not saying please and thank you, your your other people will probably think, oh, do your parents teach you this? God, your parents must be like uneducated and stuff. But if you like uh, behave very properly, very polite and like you know as a warm-hearted person, then people will look at your 
uh, will look at you and think, oh, good, the parents know how to teach, good job. So you are very important because you represent your family. Now, our values won't always align with our uh, parents, of course, because as you grow up, you will start, as you must have experienced yourself, your behavior starts to drift away from your parents' expectations. And that's why you have so many different like arguments with them, you know, like, oh, you argue about this, oh, who's going to do the dishes, when to wake up, and stuff. And that's just annoying. But that's extremely normal, because as you, uh, as you grow up, your values start to become less dependent on your parents, but more in, instead, more influenced by the peers that you are, that you are hanging out with. Like, for example, if your friends all love animals, like, you know, they talk about animals, they think about animals, they dream about animals, then you will probably be more aware about like animal treatment and animal work because animal is the um, shared values that you and your uh, classmates have. So given how easy it is to kind of like, um, I, well, ideally your values will be complete and unique as you experience new stuff. Basically anything will help you build your values. Like playing basketball will teach you the importance of teamwork. Or uh, reading literature will teach you the importance of like individual freedom. While uh, even watching Korean drama will teach you, you know, maybe like uh, what a meaningful relationship should be like. So, given everything that you have done, like everything you can build your values, it should be expected that most students can make judgment quite easy on various topics. However, this is a problem that I've found among many Kanto students. Uh, is that despite you know studying in this international school, they don't really care about the world around them, which is very ironic. And they don't really you know like care about the things that's happening around them, and also they don't care to make judgments. Like even a simple question might overwhelm them. Like when they ask when they when I ask them questions, they might be like, oh. I don't know. Uh, do I need to care about that? No? Well, if you don't trust me, we can. It's question time. So we will, I'll be asking you guys three questions, and I want to know your answers. So the first question is: Do you think developed country? Okay, so wait. Context first. Context first. So you know we had like the G20 thingy a few months ago, where they, where all the countries uh, came together and discussed about climate change and how should they deal with this, and this is an ongoing debate, is that do you think that developed countries, asking all countries, including like undeveloped ones, uh, to reduce carbon emission is correct? Like do you think it's reasonable and just for them to, to say, oh, okay, so guys, we have to reduce all of our carbon emission, and you know, despite you are not developed yet, no, we, we, you still have to reduce and follow up standards. Do you think this is the correct thing for them? I see some heads shaking. Okay, so what is that? Is that an I don't know? Did you just shrug your shoulders? Cool. Okay. <laughs> so for people that that, that said uh, that that shook their head, why? Um, well, you shook your head. That's the one primary concern about this topic is that a lot of people think, oh, well, a lot of um, developing countries will argue that if we reduce our carbon emission, then we will not be able to catch up to those developed countries who, you know, actually release all those carbon emissions back uh, when you know the, uh, the industrial revolution. So this is a debate about should we like progress together? Like should we give everyone equal opportunities? Or should we work together to for a better future? Now, the second the second question is, do you think Apple, oh it is correct for Apple to charge such a high price compared to other tech companies, even though their quality, the product quality is not top notch. Like the thing that they include in their product is not that high quality. 
this is actually a fact. Like, but yes, I'm happy. Because I think most of you use Apple products, so I think this is quite relevant to you. Have you even considered their price when buying them? Yes, good. Good. Then, do you think it is right for them to charge such a high price? Okay, I see some nods and some um, shit. Okay, well, if you are nodding, why do you think it's correct? So you now see two different perspectives. You see the from from a consumer side, and while well, the other come from a you know like a, a cost analysis side. So I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong because honestly, I think oh yes, you want to add. Others, uh, I'm not sure if it's like 
just are too shy or we don't know about this topic. But a lot of Kata students will actually just uh, will say they don't know them. They, they don't, and they don't really care about the question. But under this thin ice of not knowing, of ignorance, lies the more fundamentals. They don't care. They don't care, they don't bother to know the world around them. They don't bother to make decisions. They don't bother to know what is right and what is wrong. And that's a big no-no, because if you are incapable of making such judgments, people won't trust you. People won't think that you are capable of taking responsibility. Because most of the decisions that you have to take, you need a judge, you need a value to, to judge. And people need to trust your value so that they can entrust you with higher responsibility. Now, you might ask, well, you do talk a lot. Then what, what are your values? Like, why do you even have the audacity to come here and speak? Well, uh, wait, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, well, let me share some of my values. So the first thing is I like I cherish science. Like I believe in science. So that's why I don't really you know believe in things like MBTI or you know astrology. Well MBTI is just you know like the uh, very popular personality test which tells you oh you're an architect or you're a speaker, you're a leader and stuff like that. Because these stuff lack uh, scientific proof to show their validity. So I don't use the a personality inventory from MBTI, but instead I use MMPI or Minnesota Molded Basic Personality Inventory because it is more clinically researched and is more accepted by the scientific community. Now, note that I do not, even though I do not believe in this stuff, I do not discriminate against people that actually believe that. Like I do not say, oh, you believe in astrology? Why are you so stupid? You cannot be friends anymore. No, I said I do not do Because that's another value that I hold. That I hold uh, personal, personal freedom as is, as the highest priority. As what uh, this uh, participant has mentioned, you know, like if you want, they, if they like this, let them do it. it, it it's their choice. It's their choice to to you know like to hide out from these others, or it's their choice to believe in MBTI. So we should not interfere and enforce our values on other people. The key thing is this. Well, yeah, the key thing is this. Keep an open mind and uh, open yourself to new experiences. So new, your new experience is like a brick. Like every new experience is like a brick. And brick by brick by evaluating all the new experiences, you will build up a value of, well, a castle of value that will protect you from the very confusing um, 21st century and help you survive in this, well, actually cruel society. So, so, Oscar Wilde once said, be yourself, everyone else is taken. Well, this is really, not only because he's also an Oscar, but also because what he said is very true. The point is this, the, what we need to do as students is to find your identity and establish your value. And it's actually quite easy to do this, to achieve these things. You just need to constantly seek new information and actively process the new things that you have received. And believe me, if you do this, uh, years after when you look back into your student life, you will not regret the things that you have done because every decision you have made is done by you and you alone. And remember this, always be proactive in your life. Thank you. Hi everyone. So let us get into the introduction.